Good morning, and welcome to your uh, new life <laughs> as uh, enterprise uh, client hybrid manager experts. Um, it's a uh, long title for a Friday morning. Um, <clears throat> so the key takeaways for this session is uh, unified device management or UDM with, with configuration manager. Um, I'm going to talk a very, very, very little about Intune. There's already been an Intune session in here. Alex had that like 20 minutes ago. Um, and, and working with unified device management in here is somewhat like working with software updates. I mean, when you do software updates with Config Manager, you go in and you configure your software update server, and then you really never, ever touch that again. And it's ex exactly the same here. When we work with device management, we use Intune as the engine, but we only go in there to set up Intune and then we never ever go into that console again. We will configure and control and manage everything from within Configuration Manager. Uh, when you talk um, <clears throat> mobile device management, things are going so fast. I mean, uh, forget about the time where we could do a config manager implementation, wait a year and then do a service pack, get new updates for uh, uh, management capabilities for Windows 10 and Windows 8 and so on and so forth. That won't work any longer. So what Microsoft has done is they have configured something that they call Weaves. Uh, you also know them as config manager extensions for Windows Intune. So we're going to look, have a look at, at those and also do a little troubleshooting because sometimes and in some environments they simply do not work. Uh, I've seen two different cases and I'm going to cover those cases. Um, why do we want to do UDM? I've done uh, the last, over the last half year, I've done a lot of mobile device management projects and the main reason why we want to do it is because we want to have some inventory so we know what kind of devices we have out there and then we want to be able to do a remote wipe so if someone forgets their device in a in a, in a, in a taxi it won't ever happen to any of you in here but someone else that you might know if they forget their device we want to be able to remote wipe that and protect the data it's all about the data to be honest i really do not care about the device but i do care about the email profile on this device here uh, and that's that has been like the main driver for most of the projects that I do I've also been doing some what I would call real bring your own device projects where the main driver was actually uh, getting 1800 consultants in on a daily basis and then uh, let them enroll into config manager and Intune and after the enrollment, we would grant them access to internal resources like uh, printers and uh, work folders and so on and so forth. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of those projects because customers are not ready for that yet, but I have done a, a single and um, I'll share my experiences uh, with you on that one. And then of course, we also need to know how to implement everything. Uh, some mobility predictions. Now I just told you that I have done a single bring your own device project. Well, in my opinion, bring your own device is dead. Okay, that's the end of that. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, I do not know any companies that should or will allow me to bring in my own device and then start working with internal, internal resources. As a consultant, we often do that. I mean, I always bring on my own laptop and then if there is an ethernet cable, I kind of look around and I just plug it in and that's kind of bring my own device. Um, they don't like that. <laughs> um, so what we will have is we will have some new terms in here. We will have an employee owned device, but it will be company managed. Uh, that is something I see a lot in the States. I mean, uh, in the States, it's not uncommon that you change your job, rotate your job like every year, or every second year. And you don't want to you don't want to have a company owned uh, cell phone and then you have to change the cell phone and get a new number every year. It doesn't work like that. Um, so they they will have an employee owned but company managed. Uh, in Europe, 
and especially in Scandinavia, I don't see that a lot. I see a company owned and a company managed device. And, and that's, that's especially how it is in, for us in Denmark. And I know it's kind of the same up, up here in Norway. Um, and that, that's, that's usually the way we want it to work. Then we also have something called company dictated. I see that more and more when you go into a restaurant, for instance, they will take your order on, a, on an iPad or I haven't seen a Surface doing that yet, but on, on an iPad. And that's like a, 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 a device that is in a kiosk mode. It can only do that specific thing, nothing else. Uh, these are not terms that I came up with myself. It's terms that I have uh, stolen from this blog post here. And if you want to know what's going on in the world of mobile device management, uh, as seen with Microsoft Glasses, you want to follow Simon May here. He has some pretty good predictions, some nice blog posts around that. Uh, some key facts. This is really an eye opener. For those of you who are working with Config Manager today, and I take it that's all of you, uh, and if you worry about uh, should we really go into all of this mobile device management, well, these are the predictions uh, when we look at sales and, and the blue down here, the blue line, the f kind of the flat number, that is the PC sale. For me, it tells me two things. That's pretty good because it will remain more or less the same as it is right now, uh, meaning that I also have a job in five years, uh, hopefully. Um, but if I look at the numbers here in the smartphones, this is really where I want to be. We need to take this seriously. We cannot, we cannot afford to, to kind of ignore that any longer. Because what happens when you ignore that? You will have a lot of your of your uh, colleagues just you know going in on their on their cell phones and create an email profile and suddenly you have 1,100 uh, colleagues, but you have 5,000 email profiles when you go in and look at your Exchange Active Sync settings because you cannot control that. Um, so we need to we need to be able to control this. Then the, 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 the big question is, should we go for a can, you know, kind of standalone cloud solution like, like Intune? And you could do that. I would be wrong if I said you shouldn't, but, but that's not the way I look at it. Today, when we look at all Windows uh, enterprise clients in the entire world, 70% of them are managed with Config Manager. So... <clears throat> As a consultant, and that's what I am, <laughs> uh, that makes it that makes it a huge opportunity for me because one, I do know you probably don't have any device management today. Less than fifteen percent of all mobile devices worldwide are managed today. So uh, knowing that number and knowing that more than seventy percent are managed with Config Manager, that makes it a good opportunity for guys like me and and all of you in here. So all we have to do is kind of embrace it and then uh, get started. <clears throat> so you need to look into the MDM solutions. And I, I believe that even though we have a lot of other vendors in the market that has a more feature-wise, a more mature platform right now, that will change. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Microsoft will win this market as well. So once we have convinced ourselves that we need to go in and do something about it, we need to figure out what are we going to do about it. There, the license model, either you go out and purchase an Intune license or you go out and get yourself an EMS license. And EMS is not a product. It's only a license. There is, a, uh, there is an EMS session uh, right after lunch in here that I encourage you all to go in and participate in. So EMS is a, a license suite. It will give you access to Azure or Azure AD Premium. It will give you Intune. It will also give you Azure rights management. And when you, if you go out and purchase this one here, you will also be given the rights to run a CCM or Config Manager. So if you do not have anything today, and you go ahead and buy EMS, you will actually get the right to, to run a SCCM environment. Um, I have a customer right now uh, who, who didn't have SCCM, 
and we were like debating should we go in tune standalone or should we go config manager and i said you know what let's do con uh, ems so we get config manager and it's really it's really the most mature platform and um, <clears throat> they did that and then next meeting oh by the way i can see you have alteris now when you have config manager should we replace uh, alteris with that uh, so hopefully they will say yes to that uh, so once you've selected your your kind of your management platform as i mentioned you need to figure out if you're going standalone in tune or if you're doing a config manager uh, integration and there is a difference uh, those of you who just attended Alex's session, um, you have seen what you can do in standalone Intune. There is stuff you can do in there that you are not capable of doing in Config Manager yet. But uh, <clears throat> what we see in Intune will be ported into Config Manager as Intune extensions. It's just a matter of, uh, of time. But it, the strategy, as you know from Microsoft, is... Uh, cloud first so that means that new features will get into Intune first and then into config manager right after that uh, Azure AD premium uh, I won't talk a whole lot about that because there is an EMS session right there right there um, but it will give me stuff that I will also be able to use in config manager so for instance my multi-factor authentication when I try to enroll any device that I have up here on the table it will actually prompt me to do an MFA. So I'll, if I have uh, ADFS, I will be redirected to my ADFS. I will be authenticated there, and then my MFA will kick in. The MFA can be, you know, like a phone call. We have an application. It can be a text message, and so on and so forth. I also have, and in, in Azure AD Premium, and this is a, a cool, cool feature. I have self-service password reset. I know some of our customers are actually paying for that service today because their service disk is uh, managed by a, a, a vendor or a partner. So for every ticket they create, they have to pay, pay a, a couple of hundred kroners. And I also know for a fact that here in Norway, just like in Denmark, we have five or six weeks of vacation and um, none of you in your room forget your password during your summer holiday in Ibiza but some of your colleagues will do um, and uh, I'll be able to if I forget my password <clears throat> I'll be able to go into any uh, online Microsoft page so I could also do it from my iPad here and then I can just go through a password reset so just notice up here it says Microsoft but when I go in here and into my credentials <clears throat> it actually changes. So now um, I, I can walk through this wizard here and reset my password. It already knows who I am. You can see the, the change of the logo. Um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> not as, uh, not right now. Um, but that's just one of, uh, that's just one of the features in here. So um, multi-factor authentication works directly in Config Manager or when we're managing our devices in there. And password reset, uh, it's just a great way to save money. Uh, <clears throat> and it's also a little embarrassing for your, for your colleagues when they have to call in like every third day and, and ask for a password reset. So what are some of the challenges that, that I see? Uh, I would say that it's really not that difficult. My, my customers, they just want, as I mentioned in the beginning, they just want to get inventory data in. They want to have the ability to set a four digit passcode. And that's typically it. When you look at all the settings, you can, you can assign a ton of settings. Um, when I walked in here, Alex just showed how you can uh, prevent people from accessing uh, new friends when they go into the game center. I've had not had a single customer asking about that uh, because I do not think that most customers actually are interested in that. So they just want basic security. They want their email profiles. They want their Wi-Fi profiles. And they want to make sure that we can wipe the devices. Uh, those are the, um, the things that we worry about. Uh, so <clears throat> when, I, when I work with mobile device management, it works kind of like this. I can either have a workplace joint machine. 
So those of you who have uh, attended some of John's sessions on ADFS and workplace John machines, you have already seen this. So he would set up a web application proxy, uh, create some claims in here, and then allow you to workplace join your machines. If it's in tune, then you do not need a web application proxy server. You do not even need ADFS. It might be a good idea, but what you need is you need to synchronize your users to Azure Active Directory, and that's really it. Um, but for, for me to enroll my device, ADFS and web application proxy is absolutely not a requirement. So what are the requirements? Well, <clears throat> you need to have a DNS record. So you need to go in and prove to Microsoft that you actually own the domain. So when you, when you set up your Windows Intune account, it will ask you for a domain. So when I, I go in there and I say, well, uh, my domain is cortec.dk, it will prompt me and say, okay, if you really own that domain, can you please go in and create a CNAME record, uh, a text record for me in your public DNS, and then we will verify that. Uh, and you can see uh, DirSync with optional password sync. I would, I would definitely do an Azure Active Directory sync and include my passwords. And, and if you have attended any of the identity management sessions, you would know it's not synchronizing the password, it's synchronizing the hash. So you should be all good there. Uh, <clears throat> the process overview, I know this is not a... Uh, a friendly slide to read right now, but you will get the slide deck. So as I mentioned, you will go in, create your Intune subscription. We're talking five minutes here, okay? Uh, once you have done that, you will go in and add in your public DNS, and that really de depends on, you need to create a change in your environment, it might take a little while, and so on and so forth. Uh, for Microsoft to verify this, it usually doesn't take more than five, 10, 15 minutes. They, they, they do write that it can take up to several hours, but I've never seen that. So once we have done that, then the tricky part is we need to have some UPNs. So if I go in and register Cortec.no, I need to have a UPN for all my Intune users uh, with a, with a Cortec.no. And often I do not have that. I have maybe Cortec.local or what have you, something like that. So you need to go in. Uh, I would usually um, just write a script. There are some really good scripts out there. If you go into the scripting center, I'll publish uh, the, the script that I use and just loop through your users you have in a specific group or in a specific organizational unit, and it will then change your UPN name there. But this is a very common mistake. I would, I would even consider this as being mistake number one. And you'll, luckily, when you're working with Config Manager, you'll be able to see that in your log file. So there is a log file called Cloud User Sync, and it will tell you exactly what you did wrong in there. Uh, once I've done that, I will go in and configure ADFS uh, if needed, and I will also uh, configure AD uh, synchronization. Uh, <clears throat> And I've already done that in my environment because I am going to demonstrate everything in a production environment, which is, I just found that to be more fun than setting up a, a lab environment. Uh, so all the external stuff is done. So now I just have to go in, in Config Manager and in Config Manager, I will set up the Intune connection. And there is, there is a limitation in Config Manager, in my opinion right now, I can only have one Intune connector, meaning if you are a uh, hosting provider and you're providing, you know, you have multiple customers in the same primary site, uh, you have an issue or you have a challenge. Uh, but as right now, we can only have one connector. Uh, so that's kind of the, uh, the process overview. But before you get started, you need to figure out if your environment is ready. Get CU4 installed, period. CU4 has some... Um, uh, hot fixes that are targeted specifically at the MDM management, and you want those because that will that will bring your entire you know enrollment process down from 40 minutes to 60 seconds. And uh, even though we love to spend time with end users, I would rather give them a device, enroll that, and then kick them out after 60 minutes than having or 60 seconds. Uh, instead of having to talk to them for 40 minutes, that's, that's going to be a long day. Um, so make sure you have this. <clears throat> uh, and then when I'm enrolling my device, 
a few things will happen. So I will go in and I will demonstrate this in just a couple of seconds here. Uh, my, my device will communicate with Intune. It never ever communicates with Config Manager. So when it communicates with Intune, it already knows about me as a user. Okay? It doesn't know anything about the device yet. So what does that mean? It means that up here in Intune, if I have any user policies, those will be applied immediately. But if you only work with device policies, and, and, and we, have been, we have been using that uh, for many years in Config Manager. You know, you create a collection, you create some custom settings, or you deploy a package, or you deploy a baseline to that collection of devices. But if you do that with a mobile device, what, what has to happen is, I will enroll my device here. Uh, oh, that guy will enroll his device there. Uh, it doesn't know anything about the device, so we will synchronize with Configuration Manager. By default, we do that every five minutes. In Configuration Manager, the device will end up in the old mobile devices collection, but maybe you don't have any policies applied to that one. So you have to wait until it ends up in the right collection, and it can take, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, once you have done that, then Config Manager needs to synchronize with Intune again and say, hey, so I can see you have an iPad. Uh, by the way, can you apply these security settings to your iPad? So there are a couple of round trips because my device here also needs to synchronize or communicate with Intune again. So if you do a device um, uh, policy, that can easily take you 20, 25 minutes. So what I'm trying to say here is, don't do that. Always deploy everything you have. There might be, a, there is always one exception. Uh, but, but besides that one, always deploy every, everything to users. That's it. Uh, <clears throat> I'll still be authenticated by against my Azure Active Directory. Uh, so my users need to be out here and we can do that with password sync, or we could also have uh, ADFS, which is what I have in my organization, and then we'll just take the request in here and, and send that to my on-premise Active Directory. But it is definitely not a requirement. Very important. And those of you who just attended John's session here at nine o'clock, um, if, if you don't have any really good excuses for having ADFS, I mean, password sync is, is just as good for you. Uh, <clears throat> When I'm enrolling the device, I will always enroll the device as being a personal device. Uh, you can also, you can go in after and then you can say, well, this is actually a corporate device. And there is a, there is a difference. So for instance, when we're doing uh, a software inventory, if it's a personal device, we will only inventory software that the end user has installed through the company portal. So only the software that we have kind of pushed out. Uh, if it's a corporate owned device, we will gather all the software. Okay. Uh, also, when we're doing wipes, there are a few settings in here. I would say that most of our devices are corporate owned and you want to go in and make sure that they are corporate owned. Uh, we, we have a use case. <clears throat> um, some of my good friends down in Belgium had a uh, customer that required that all corporate owned devices uh, couldn't be un unenrolled. So right now I can actually go in and unenroll my device if I want to, but there, if it was corporate owned, they wouldn't allow an unenrollment. You can do that. It requires that you go through a 200 page PDF document where you read about all the OMA DMM, uh, DM settings. And in there you will find one of the settings on page 140 that will tell you exactly what to do. And then you go, wow. And it's like copy and paste and then it works right out of the box, except that they had a spelling error in the setting on page 140, and it took a little while to figure that out. <clears throat> but I, I have the setting so I can show you. It only works for Windows phones, but it, 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 it works great. So <clears throat> I can go in and, sp and specify if it's, a, if it's going to be a corporate owned instead of a, uh, a primary owned. So let's have a look at that. Um, infrastructure and device enrollment. 
And as I mentioned, I'm going to do all of this in a production environment. So uh, first thing first, when you, when you have Config Manager SP1, hopefully you're all on R2 by now. If not, then you know what you have to do Monday morning uh, that is upgrading the environment. You will get some cloud services and in here you will have some Intune subscriptions. There are a few things that I need to do before I set up my Intune connector. And that is going in and creating a collection of users that I will allow a collection of users that can enroll devices. Okay, so if your end users do not belong to a collection in here, they won't be able to do that. Second, I will set up the Intune subscription. When I set up the Intune subscription, I will be taking through the same questions as I have in here. So what is your, the name of your collection? Uh, what is your company name? Do you have any privacy documentation? And we don't have that. Uh, <clears throat> but I've had a project stopping because of privacy. So I was like, okay, we can do all the technical stuff, but the HR uh, department, they wouldn't allow us to do anything until we had all the privacy uh, documentation in order. And I don't know anything about privacy. I'm like, I'm going to manage your device. I'm going to steal everything you have on that device. And if that's not okay, don't enroll it. Uh, they didn't accept that. So that kind of stopped the project for a while, which was kind of strange. Uh, then we have device support and uh, even though we had a party last night, uh, I mean, if you can misconfigure Android support, then, <laughs> then you're really, you shouldn't be doing this uh, because it's only a check mark. Okay, that's all there is to it. There is nothing else to it. Check it and uh, enable it and you can manage your uh, Android phones. For iOS, you need a few things. You need to create what is called an Apple push notification certificate. If you have Mobile Iron or Good or any of the other vendors today, it's exactly the same process. Uh, when, you, when you log in to, uh, to Apple's website, don't use my account, don't use a consultant's account, don't use your private account. Make sure you have a, what I would call an Apple service account that stays with your company because you need to log in next year again and renew that certificate. Um, the certificate is only valid for a year. It, they, Apple will send you a mail. So they will say a couple of weeks before it's, it's expiring. Can you please go in and renew the cert? And if you do that, just renew the cert on their website. It's fairly easy. They have a big green button, say renew. You just have to click that. Uh, then you import the, uh, the cert again. And that's it. It takes you five, 10 minutes. If you forget to do that, then you have to re-enroll all of your iOS devices again. That will take you more than five to 10 minutes. Um, and it's not that fun. Then we have uh, Windows support. And Windows support comes in three flavors, uh, even though there are only two tabs in here. So Windows support here would be, I would like to enable Windows enrollment. That would be my RT devices. So if you have any of those that do not believe you do have that, most of us who have a Surface, we got a Surface Pro, uh, and <clears throat> which is what I would also recommend. Uh, but if you do have an, an RT device, enable it in here. Now you can enroll your device. The code signing certificate is only required if you want to sideload applications, meaning if you have some of your in-house line of business apps and you want to make sure that those actually get installed on those devices. For my Windows phone, um, we, need, we need the company portal. And the company portal on a Windows Phone 8 is a portal that you deploy. You need to sign that portal. And in order for you to do that, you need a code signing certificate from Symantec. If you do have Windows 8.1, and most of you with a Windows Phone, you probably have 8.1, you don't have to worry about the certificate. Okay, because you just get the company portal from the Windows Store like we do from on, on the other devices in here. Uh, <clears throat> then I have some company contact information and I have a logo and that's all good. So when I install the connector, what, it, uh, what, what we will get is we will get a new distribution point. So I get manage.microsoft.com. 
if I have my own IPA packages, you know, iOS packages uh, on-prem, I will have to deploy those to this distribution point in here. I also, and this is mistake number two, I also have to go in and create a new site system role. So if you do not go through uh, on one of your site system servers and create the connector, then nothing happens. I had a customer uh, spending like four or five hours here just monitoring the, uh, the uh, CM trace. In CM trace, we have a couple of log files you want to look at. We have uh, cloud user sync. We have DMP downloader and DMP uploader. So you want to make sure that you take a look at these log files because th this will be your connector reporting to these log files. So you can see if you're actually uploading and downloading your policies. You can see if you're getting inventory data in from clients. And you can also see if you're uploading or downloading uh, user information. So in here, nothing happened. And nothing happened because he didn't create the uh, connector. Okay, so now I have the connector. I'm, uh, I'm ready to kind of enroll my device in here. This is always interesting because now I have to now I have to worry about the wireless um, the Wi-Fi in here. <clears throat> so if you can please all unjoin the NIC Wi-Fi, I would be more than happy. Uh, the requirement for me to do this is to download the company portal. So I've already done that. Uh, it's just going in, do a search for Windows Intune Company Portal. When I when I sign in, I'll sign in with my corp credentials. It will redirect me because, as I mentioned, we do have uh, we do have ADFS, and uh, there is this thing with Apple and passwords in clear text. So, <laughs> so it's really easy. If you know my password, you have to do my job. That's it. So what I have right now is I have multi-factor authentication. So th that is part of the EMS license, as I, m as I mentioned. Uh, and I've configured my multi-factor authentication to send me, and you won't be able to see that, uh, but just to, I, I need to go in here in my app and verify that I'm actually me, or that I stole the device and the password. Uh, <clears throat> so right now the enrollment process will begin. And again, if, you have, if you've used the mobile iron, uh, you will recognize the process because we are now, it's, it's controlled by Apple, okay? So I need to go in and enroll the device. What it will do is it will create a management profile. And under normal circumstances on a, you know, decent Wi-Fi and so on, this is something that will take me maybe 30, 60 seconds from the beginning. So I'm installing the management profile, selecting install, and I'm not done clicking. Uh, it's, so it's generating the keys right now. And the cool thing is, uh, once it's done doing this, do you trust remote management? Sure, it's Friday. <clears throat> once it's done enrolling here, because it's already and we're done there. Uh, <clears throat> it, because it already knows about me, what it will do is it will just give me access to all of the applications. So the applications that I have published, I will have access to them within, you know, like 10, 15 seconds from now. And it will also give me my email profile. It will download uh, devices enrolled. So you can see now I have access to my applications. I can see the other uh, devices that I have. So I have like five different devices in here. I can go in and look at all my apps and I can start installing if I wanted to install, you know, remote app. I don't know how many of you saw Maria's session on remote app yesterday, but it's pretty cool. I can actually, I can access my uh, Azure remote apps in here. Um, not going to do that right now. Uh, and then I have full access to, to Windows applications. So <clears throat> this is the iPad that I just enrolled. 
and you'll see that I can do stuff like uh, resetting the device, I can remove the device, I can rename it, and I can also synchronize. So if I wanted to synchronize the profile, the policies, just like we're doing on a Windows device, we can actually do that. Um, so this one here will end up in my, uh, in my config manager database within, you know, five minutes from now. And once it, it ends up in there, I'll be able to go in and change the device ownership from private or personal to, um, to corporate. And let's just have a look at that. <clears throat> so right now in configuration manager, what will happen is if I look at device collections, you have to build in all mobile devices. So the device will just end up in here. So in here you will see I have my iPad. Right now the device ownership is not determined. It's just, I mean, just enrolled it, but just hang in, uh, hang in there. It will be uh, personal. Um, if I go into my mobile device folder here, I have already created some folders, or sorry, some collections where I have all my iOS devices. And what I have is I don't have the time to go in right click and set the uh, change the ownership and, and change it to company. Um, <clears throat> so we have a PowerShell script here and the PowerShell script will do exactly that. So the PowerShell script, what I do in here is I just add in the, uh, the uh, name of the collection. So we have a couple of teenagers in my organization that are using iOS devices. They will grow up eventually. Uh, and the ownership will be com uh, company. So when I run this one here, there you go. You can see the uh, device names down there. And if I go back into my, um, my, my collection, you can see that I've now changed all of these to company. So this is something you probably want to set up as a, you know, your scheduled task, uh, or maybe just run it like once a day or what have you. <clears throat> so back to this one, you can see now that I, um, while I was doing this demo here, I just got my email profile. So now it's just asking for my, my email password and then it has already created the active sync stuff. So again, since this is, a live environment. I'm just going to put in my credentials <clears throat> and it will start synchronizing. So right now it's just synchronizing uh, <clears throat> my email stuff and whatever I have in here. So it will also get the security policies and so on. And this is, this is a good story. Half a year ago, I, I did some projects and they kicked me out because this took 45 minutes because we didn't have the user policy stuff. We, already, we, we only had the device policy stuff. And they were kind of laughing at me and say, you know what, we, we can't do that. We can't have a user sitting here for 45 minutes. But now, uh, yeah, there you go, an email profile. Um, but now it, 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 all it really takes is uh, less than two minutes from my start the in, in enrollment process until I have a device that my end user can take and walk away. Because I also have my Wi-Fi profile now, I have my certificates that I need and so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> Okie dokie. So settings management, uh, <clears throat> this, is, this is one of the key points in managing a mobile device. So we have something called the Config Manager extensions for Windows Intune. Those of you who have the Intune connector installed, you know when Microsoft are releasing new stuff, you will uh, open up your console and it will say, hey, we have a new extension. Um, there are a couple of things you need to know where, when you have a new extension coming in. You need to be a local admin. Not a big deal because you are a local admin, except if you have a lot of administrators that access the company, oh, sorry, the config manager uh, portal from like, let's say a Citrix server. And they're not local admins on that one. So when they try to activate the extensions, they will just get an error. 
Um, you also need access to all scopes. Is that an issue? Yep. Because only the uh, person that actually installed Configuration Manager could be a consultant, it could be your colleague, it could be someone else, but only that specific person will have access to all scopes. So what you need to do is you need to log in as that account. And then once you log in as that account, you need to make sure that your account will get access to all instances of all objects that are associated with this security role. So if you do not do that, this is like a, I wouldn't call it a rookie mistake because they didn't, they didn't explain it very well, but you need to do it. So you need to go in, have a config manager admins group, and then assign permissions to that. And being a full administrator is not enough. A failure to do so, if you delete the external account who actually did the installation, then you have to go in and poke around in SQL. Uh, <clears throat> it can be done. Uh, it's just not that easy so it is this is this is like extremely important and if if you haven't done so in your own environment you should go in and do it right now uh, when you download the extensions those extensions do actually get downloaded to your console so if i go into program files and configuration manager i have the admin console in here and here you'll see I have a download folder and here I have my extensions. So if I want to install the extensions manually, you need to use the feature extensions installer. And then you specify the extension you want to install and that you can do on your Citrix box. So if you have like, you know, 50 administrators there without local admin permissions, that is the way you, uh, you, you solve that issue. Otherwise, uh, if you are a local administrator and every, you have all the permissions, it's straightforward. I mean, you just, you just enable the extensions, restart the console, and you're good to go. Uh, I do not know how many of you joined my session yesterday on settings management, but the key concepts in here are exactly the same. So if I want to control anything, and, and I want to control uh, not everything, I just want to control a few things, what I do is I go in and create a config, uh, config item. And I remember the first kind of the first projects, I was like talking to my customer and showing all the items and they were like, yeah, that's fine. We just want a four digit passcode. I was like, man, <laughs> it's so boring, but that's, that's how it is for most. They just want a passcode four or five digits. And that's about it. That's all, more or less the only thing we go in here and configure. I'll add that to a baseline and then I will, uh, deploy that one to my users and I will let the Intune connector uh, make sure that we synchronize that after five minutes, they will be downloaded to, uh, to my Intune devices in here. So that's straight out of the box. There is a difference though, when you're managing uh, Windows phones, because Windows phones, they, only, they also uh, uh, can be managed through the OMA DM protocol. And in here, you can actually do some, uh, some, some really neat stuff. There is a uh, OMA DM specification. So that, that is the, uh, I think it's like 200 pages document that I talked to you about. And in here, in this document here, uh, let's see, I have it right here with me. Uh, they, you, oh no, that's not the one. That's another one I wanna share with you. But this one here, so 200 pages or 230 pages, and you will find, I mean, this is like back in the early 90s when we got TechNet and we, or the resource kit, remember that? We got resource kit for Windows for work groups and we could go in and read all the settings. It's exactly like that. So it's really, for a guy like me, this is, uh, this is good reading. Um, <clears throat> so, so, so you can go in here and read all about the settings that you can configure. And once you have done that, you can translate that directly into CIs in here. So if I go into my configuration items, I have some uh, MDM CIs in here. And one of them is the denial of uh, MDM unenrollment. So once you have enrolled your phone with this CI and this CI is explained in the document, you won't be able to unenroll your device again. 
unless you're a config manager administrator. And this is, this is kind of neat because this is the kind of freedom that we want as administrators. We want some stuff in the UI, but we also want some really cool stuff in here. And you can do that. Uh, creating, for those of you who did not attend the session yesterday, creating a CI is, uh, is fairly straightforward. So I'll just go in and specify my mobile device. And in my mobile device in here, I have a grouping of CIs. So these are like, you know, password settings and so on. Those are the basic things. Or you can also configure additional settings. And that would be setting up an OMA DM policy like I just uh, showed you. So even though it's super, super boring, this is what most of our customers want. That's it. We do require a passcode. It has to be four digits and it's, uh, it's not even super sexy, but that is the only thing that they really want. Um, <clears throat> when you create your CIs, what I would do is I would never ever do like I did here, uh, call it Nick. I would call it a uh, basic uh, and then iOS settings. So even though some of the settings are the same for Android, Windows Phone, and iOS, you want to configure three different CIs. Why? Because some settings do not apply to Android, and they only apply to iOS, and you end up troubleshooting. It's so much easier for your colleagues to figure out what settings that they should actually modify if you have three different. And that the same applies to uh, certificates and so on. Um, you don't want to have just one big setting. Okay, so we uh, have a list of uh, the settings we can configure here, and this is an ever, I mean, it changes all the time, so I don't want to go through it. Uh, some, some scenarios, they are described up here. So this was what the one that I just showed you. We do not want to allow users to unenroll a corporate device. So a few things you want to do, run the PowerShell script, and then create the CI, and it's all explained here uh, on this blog post here. Another business scenario could be to have a whitelist or blacklist of applications. That you can also do. The only thing is you need to create again another custom CI, and you need to know where in the portal that you will actually find this application. But if you do that, and it's, it's, it's fairly simple, then, um, then it will simply just block opening that application, which is kind of cool. Again, it only works on Windows devices, uh, so hopefully all of your customers are using Windows phones. Uh, <clears throat> applications. Um, how many of you are using the app model? Some of you. Uh, I remember when, when Microsoft started talking about the app model, it was like, hey, you can have multiple deployment types, and it's so super cool, and we had like uh, MSI examples, AppV examples, and so on. Uh, when I went to my customers, reality, uh, we created an application and a single deployment type. That was it. That was all they needed. Uh, we didn't have any who actually needed, you know, the MSI, the 32-bit MSI, 64-bit MSI, FV, and so on and so forth. But now with mobile devices, it makes perfectly good sense to have multiple deployment types. So if I look at... Um, at one of the applications I have in here, go to application management and my apps <clears throat> in production. In here I should have somewhere. Let's see where I have that. See, this is a production environment. I'm not the only one using this environment, so it's always interesting to go in here. Last time I went in here during a demo, someone created a thousand applications because they wanted to test the PowerShell script. So I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, but in here you can see I have Skype, and then I have multiple deployment types for Skype. It makes perfectly good sense. So when you create your deployment type, uh, <clears throat> create your deployment type here. You just go in and then you can select the install deployments. 
So instead of a Windows installer, I can select Windows Store, I iOS Store, Google Play. If you do iOS Store, there is no search in there. So what you would have to do is you kind of have to memorize the different pages. So how many pages do we have in the iOS Store? We have a lot of apl applications and pages in there. So what you want to do there is you want to just go in And do a uh, and and do a search in here. Find the application that you want to install from the App Store, and simply copy the address up here. That's it. It makes your life a whole lot easier. So right now, just created the word application. Okay. So that's that's usually the way I want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> So my applications will be made available to me, and I, as you saw in the beginning of the uh, session here, I just have the applications available in the uh, in the company portal. I don't want to do a whole lot of stuff with the apps in here because we just have like eight minutes left. Company resource access, this is cool. This is where I can go in and do, you know, like the real bring your own device uh, experience. So I can go in here and make sure I get an email profile. Setting up the email profile is essential for all devices. That is the reason why we want to manage the device. In Intune right now, you can set up a, a exchange policy saying if your device is not enrolled, you won't get an email profile. I don't know if Alex showed that in the previous session, uh, we will be able to do the same in Configuration Manager because what we can do in Intune, it's just a matter of time before we can do that. And that has been one of the main drivers for some of our projects. We do not want to have a thousand users and 8,000 exchange profiles. I mean, why do we have that? We have that because you do not control it. So, I mean, I can just enroll, create an Active Sync profile on this one here. And then I can forget about the device and someone has access, full access to my email. And I, I, I didn't even think about that. Uh, that's, that's like number one. Number two, that would be creating uh, certificates, giving me access to my Wi-Fi profiles. When I want access to my Wi-Fi profiles, uh, if you're using a pre-shared secret, that one for iOS and Android, you cannot deploy that one, which is a major setback right now if you've been using some of the other vendor tools because there you can create your pre-shared secret and then you can just go ahead and deploy that. If you do have a Windows device, uh, you can do that. I just wrote a blog post on how to do that, but basically you just create an XML file. In that XML file, you just uh, add in the, pass the password and then the SSID and the basic settings. It's really, really easy and then you deploy that one, and it works. Um, when you want to deploy some of the other profiles, then it gets interesting. And then you need to spend a little more than five minutes, because if you want to deploy a, a certificate, you know, like a user certificate, because your Wi-Fi requires user certificates, you need to know about Indus. You need to set Indus up, you need to know about the certificate requirements we have for iOS and the certificate requirements we have for Windows phones, and they are not the same. Trust me, I've been spending hours and hours and hours on this. Uh, I have some blog posts that will describe the gotchas, what you need to avoid. And um, as of, uh, I think it was last week, something like that, we also have a really good step-by-step -step guide here that you can download from uh, from uh, TechNet. And if you have to do anything within this, go in and download this one. And even though this one talks to you about company resource access, it's 100 pages only on how to set up in this. When you can write 100 pages around that, do you think that's an easy thing to do? Nope. <laughs> um, so we, if, if we had to go through this, we would have to have like two or three sessions on this alone here. But go through the document, read my blog post on it, uh, because there are some uh, requirements for your iOS certificates, and it's not super easy to find those requirements. Uh, and I had it working at a customer for Windows 8. It just worked right out of the box. 
wouldn't work for my iOS. So I never ever got my certificates applied on iOS. Turns out that Apple, they don't like the signature is proof of origin. So you have to go in and remove this one. Once I did that, it worked beautifully. Uh, so your, your life as an enterprise administrator now requires that you know something about identity management, bursting, and also PKI, iOS certificates. So no wonder that we are kind of tired Friday evening. I mean, it's usually been a pretty busy, um, busy week. Uh, advanced inventory scenarios. That one is pretty easy. Uh, because there are no advanced inventory scenarios. Uh, you can't really do a whole lot. So what you see is what you get, except for uh, EMI codes. You can actually create a MOV file. And again, this MOV file you can download from this blog post here. But you can create a MOV file, import that MOV file to your default client settings, and then you'll be able to get your EMI codes on your Windows Phone 8.1 and also your Windows 10 phones when they are being released. So <clears throat> being used to working with Config Manager, there is so much stuff we can do on the inventory part, we won't be able to do that in here. Uh, this is not the end, but it will be the end for one of my devices <clears throat> because a couple of things in here that I need to demo in the last three minutes. What happens when I hand out a device to a developer and I did that yesterday to one of my colleagues, uh, Jacob, who has been doing some, um, some, some sessions here. It took like two minutes and then he jailbroke my phone. So the phone I have somewhere around here is jailbroken. I'm able to detect that. So I created a collection in here uh, with all the jailbroken phones. So I have a collection here called all jailbroken devices. It only has one device. When you implement this, you need to have a company policy saying, what do you do about those devices? Uh, you could wipe the device, but if it was the CEO's device, that would be probably the last thing you did in that job. <laughs> so that wouldn't be good. Uh, so what I recommend is we, we figure out who is the primary user for that specific device. And then we add in a uh, collection that we call all bad, bad users. On that collection, we will deploy some settings that will prevent them, you know, from getting a email profile, profile prevent them from getting access to the internet and all of that stuff, because then they will turn themselves in. Um, if you do not have orchestrator or if you do not have SMA or anything like that, we have a PowerShell script here that you can use. So when you run this PowerShell script, it will detect how many devices you have in there. And you can see it detected, or you maybe you can't see that. That's my phone telling me that I have 120 seconds left. Uh, you can see it actually detected me as the primary user. So right now, the PowerShell script, if I go to my user collection, will have created a direct membership rule on the collection in here. And there you go. So if I had any settings applied to this collection, within five minutes, I would get all of those settings down here. Okay, so the uh, next thing I just want to demo, and that is like a, one of the... Uh, key questions. <clears throat> what if I lose a device? Not that it will never ever happen to me. Uh, it will. I, I, Scandinavian Airlines, they have like half of my iPods because I forget them all the time. Uh, but if I, if I go into the, uh, see this, uh, this, this is the one I just enrolled. So if I go into the company portal, this should be my iPhone. So if I go in and click on the iPhone in here, you can see I have Ken's iPhone. That's the one I have on my right side. And if I reset this one here, I lost the device. It will say, do you know what you're doing? And I'll go like, yeah, sure, I know what, I, what I'm doing. Uh, then within 10, 15 seconds, there you go, it will actually reset the device. 
So it communicated with Intune, it found the device, we have like something that looks like a fast channel, and this device is now being reset. I could also just have removed it, so I just removed management, removing the uh, profile, the uh, company profile, and by doing that, I would lose access to my applications, I would lose access to my uh, Wi-Fi profiles, those will be deleted, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that that is one of the things that you know most projects they want to they want to have a demo on does that actually work in here just my last seconds here you can see i do have my management profile and if we look in more details you can see i got my wi-fi profile in here i have some cortex certs and so on and so forth so all of this let's just get rid of that is created in my company resource access i do have blog posts on all of this so i have my certificate profiles in here uh, i have the root certificate that i need to deploy that's super easy it doesn't use indes then i have my skep certificate uh, that one requires indes i have my email profile in here and my email profile super super simple uh, you have your exchange active sync settings you have some synchronization settings in here and and that's it and then just make sure that your deployments goes to all intune users that's like the major thing in there with that that would be the end for me so i hope you enjoyed the session and i hope you have some trust in this and as i told you we are going from non-managed to fully managed in less than two minutes now which is really kind of cool uh, so thanks for coming and enjoy your friday and have a great weekend when you get to that one <laughs>